Blue Stinger is a 1999 survival horror game developed by Climax Graphics and published by Sega and Activision that was released exclusively for the Sega Dreamcast. In it, you take control of a couple of survivors who find themselves trapped on an island owned by a biotech company, and you have to fight your way through hordes of monsters to get to the bottom of an ancient mystery at the center of the island to find a way out. This is a great game to play during the holidays because it actually takes place during the holiday season. Entire parts of the island are decorated festively. The soundtrack features a sickeningly catchy song appropriate for the holiday season, and one of the main characters even spends a portion of the game dressed as Santa Claus. Everything about this game, from the story to the voice acting to the music, is reminiscent of a sci-fi horror film. Seeing as low-budget sci-fi and horror are my wheelhouse, I felt right at home in this one. You're given the ability to switch between two characters whenever you want. But most players normally end up using one character for a majority of the game, while switching to the other specifically for boss battles because his weapons deal more damage. It's a shame, frankly. They missed the opportunity to do something interesting with the game mechanics here. The voice acting in this game is downright bizarre especially given the body of work of the cast. These weren't amateurs, and the way the dialogue is edited in during the cutscenes doesn't help either. Now, because this is an early 3D game, one of the challenges you're going to face is your camera being connected to your direction buttons. The game is designed to auto-aim your weapon when you fire to make it easier, but seeing what's in a room to evade it when you enter can be challenging. Strangely, the Japanese version of this game utilizes a fixed camera system like the earlier Resident Evil games. Why you'd create a full 3D world only to apply such constraints is beyond me. Visually, this game has a lot of charm going for it. I'm a sucker for first and second gen 3D games because of their level design. Everything always ends up having a lot of personality because the developers were basically making it up as they went and there weren't really any industry standards to work off of yet. That being said, without a minimap or even an on-screen compass, it's extremely easy to get turned around in this game. The monsters populating the island were designed by veteran makeup artist Robert Short, whose body of work includes Beetlejuice and the Killbots in the 1986 cult classic Chopping Mall. This is a game you're going to have to grind in. Weapons, health, and ammunition are all available in vending machines located throughout the island, but the more powerful the weapon, the more expensive it is. Fortunately, enemies respawn every time you re-enter an area, and they drop coins when you kill them, so they can eventually be purchased. The game boasts a variety of weapons to choose from, though frankly I found myself sticking to the same three weapons for melee, ranged attacks, and boss battles. The game does feature an unlicensed lightsaber, though. Tashihiko Sahashi handled the game's soundtrack. His background in film and television lent the score an extremely cinematic feel, which enhances the tense and thrilling gameplay experience. My only real gripe with the game is the fact that certain parts absolutely require a walkthrough. There's things that have to happen in a certain order or require you to do something you wouldn't have thought of on your own. And with little to no hints, and some of these portions even having a time limit in areas that can be extremely confusing to navigate, it can make parts of the game unnecessarily frustrating without any guidance. Verdict? Spread some Yuletide fear during the holiday season with this rousing Dreamcast launch title. Until next time.